What Goes Around Comes Around by Lois Bradburn I woke up and all I could see was a light blinding my eyes. I had never felt so tired in my life and I could barely keep my eyes open. I felt numb. But I knew that if everything went well, then things would get a lot better and I could be with Mum. I started to hear a very quiet and faint voice. It was one of the nurses. They were saying my name over and over and asking if I could hear them. I didn't think I'd have the strength to reply. I tried, however. Yes, I replied with a weak and trembling voice. Things were getting less blurry now, so I could make out some faces that were above me saying my name. I felt light-headed still, like the world was spinning around me. All I could think of was Mum, though. Hopefully I'd be with her soon. I woke up a couple of hours later. I'd gone to sleep. I was in a bright room full of other children in hospital beds and the same light blue gowns everyone had to wear. I was still quite sleepy, but I managed to lift myself up ever so slightly and take a glance to my left. There, right in front of me, was Mother. She looked down with anxiousness in her eyes. Mum, I whispered. She looked up with a relieved look on her face. She smiled and gave me a massive hug. I hadn't seen her for a few days. Then she worked two jobs so that my sister Poppy and I had enough food to keep us going and a roof over our heads. She worked really hard every day of the week so I hadn't seen her since the Tuesday she dropped me off at the hospital. I had to go two days without seeing her and then have a massive operation. She must have taken the day off, I thought to myself, whilst she was giving me a warm and loving cuddle. Afterwards, we had a long conversation on how the operation went and if I felt okay. Then a nurse came in with my lunch. She was my favourite nurse. Diane, her name was. She helped me for months whilst on the cancer ward. She always made me smile and laugh. And she brightened up my day. She brought a nice warm bowl of soup, which filled me with warmth. I was more awake after lunch. I played I Spy with the other children in the room and we got stories read to us by Diane. But around three o'clock I got really tired again. I'd been getting tired throughout the chemotherapy I'd had over the past three months. But not like this. It was draining. This happened over the next three weeks. I'd constantly been really tired, only being awake for around a constant four hours at a time at the most. However, an unfamiliar doctor and Diane walked into the room one Saturday and sat down. The doctor had sheets of paper, which I thought probably had my operation information on. The doctor cleared his throat and began speaking. Tom, I've never seen such a fast recovery from an operation like this before. Especially not an eight-year-old. You've done so well and we're pleased to say that the operation worked and you're free of any cancer. That's when I heard Mum start to cry. She held my hand tightly and constantly gave me a smile. Two days later, I left the hospital and went home. I got to see Poppy, Granny and Grandpa. I got my life back. Twenty years went by and I ended up becoming a nurse myself. I'd gone to a university quite far from home and studied medicine. I loved the city I was in and chose to stay there in the most popular hospital. I had that job for around six years, but missed my family. They were the most important thing in my life. So I moved back home. I start my new job today at the local hospital. It's the one where I got treated. I walked in feeling very nervous, but excited at the same time. I knew many people there, which was comforting. I took the lift to the ward I was going to be working on, got to the front desk and asked the woman behind it what rooms I was taking care of today. She told me it wasn't very busy and I was only allocated one room, room 616. She told me it was an old woman in her late 70s 
She had dementia and was taken there for blood tests. But they found out she was dying in the next few days, and so they kept her there, to die in the environment she worked at once before. I opened the door to room 616. I immediately knew who she was. However, for reassurance, I looked at the whiteboard. Diane Fletcher, I read. The nurse who helped me through chemotherapy and the operation. A few hours went by and our heart rate was going down. She was dying today. I couldn't leave her side for more than ten minutes and I was constantly trying to make conversation with her. She was just how I remembered, even though she had dementia. Speaking was getting more difficult for her. I got some other nurses in the room. I was trying to get them to help me try and save her. But that wasn't possible. I held her hand and looked into her bright blue eyes and cried, Diane! Her eyes widened as she whispered, Tom! At that same moment, her eyes closed and she took her final breath. I felt empty, like I'd just lost someone I'd known for my entire life. Tears dropped down my face as the other nurses held me. She had just died in front of me. My hero. Thank you.